Hello everyone, this is Douglas, and welcome to my second devlog for my voxel ray marching renderer, written in C-sharp using Vulkan for the graphics API. In this episode, I'll be discussing the progress that I made in the areas of textures, lighting, and optimization. When we left off last episode, I had finished implementing the basic ray marching algorithm, and could draw this 256 by 256 by 256 volume on the screen. However, the volume was rather boring, each voxel was colored simply based on its position, and I wanted to test my material system by rendering multiple textures. In my renderer, each voxel is assigned a material, a 16-bit identifier that corresponds to an object-specific set of parameters. These materials will eventually contain data about lighting effects and transparency as well, but for now, they will simply represent the ID of a 3D texture. I intend to use small, three-dimensional arrays of colors to represent the colors that each voxel with a given material should take on, and then tile the 3D textures across the entire voxel volume. This will allow me to texture, in three dimensions, large voxel volumes without eating up too much memory. I set up a basic system to test this, and rendered a voxel mesh with dirt and grass textures. The textures themselves, which I procedurally generated, will need some work, but they're fine for now. At the same time, I took a moment to implement levels of detail, as you can see here. As I get farther away from the mesh, a lower quality version is displayed, making rendering faster. Unfortunately, however, I have found that the LODs don't improve rendering all that much. This is despite the fact that adding LODs was quite easy to do, thanks to the octree structure in which I store my voxel meshes. If I want to use a higher LOD, I simply don't traverse all the way down to the bottom level of my voxel octree. I just stop at the selected level of detail and then use the material stored there to draw the voxel. And it was very gratifying to see how intuitive this addition was, although like I said, unfortunately, uh, rendering speed isn't improved all that much. Next, I set to prototyping basic lighting by adding sunlight with shadows. Because the ray marching algorithm was already complete, this too was trivial. When a voxel is hit with a ray, you just cast another ray in the direction of the sun. If that, uh, if that ray doesn't hit anything, then the voxel is indeed in sunlight, and I color it accordingly. There were a few oddities that I ran into, but I was able to work out the bugs. With just a few more lines of code, I had shadows working, and that is the real beauty of ray tracing techniques. I also imported a teapot model using a tool I found online, Voxelizer, which can conveniently convert arbitrary 3D models to voxels. Here's the teapot, lit using the same shadowing technique. After toying with these prototypes for a bit, I moved on to improving the core of the rendering engine. First and foremost, I needed to be able to draw multiple objects on screen. My method for ray casting against multiple objects was relatively simple. For each ray, I would iterate over every object in the scene, detect which objects bounding boxes were intersected, and then sort those objects by uh, the entry depth of the ray. This method, though, was very limited and unoptimized. For one, because GPU code cannot arbitrarily allocate memory, I could only sort a limited number of objects. That meant that each ray could only be casted against a finite number of objects, like four or eight. Further, iterating over every object in the scene and sorting was computationally expensive. I decided to rewrite my algorithm to dynamically select the objects being raycasted against, allowing for a ray to pass through an unlimited number of objects. The algorithm now determines the shortest distance the ray must step to reach a new voxel, and if there is another object with a shorter step distance, the algorithm begins stepping against that object instead. This approach has the downside of having to iterate over every object in the scene, though, every time the ray changes objects, something to be improved in the future. As you can see on screen, I'm successfully rendering multiple, uh, multiple little cubes, uh, each of which are their own object. At the same time, I noticed that I could optimize one of the significant rendering bottlenecks, which was octree traversal. I store my voxel data as tightly packed voxel octrees. Each level in the tree begins with the LOD data, and then a flags byte that denotes which octants are trees and which are full of one material type. Following that is the data for the full octants, and then the position offsets, pointers of a sort, for the sparse octants. This is inefficient, 
because when I'm uh, stepping down the tree to determine the material of a certain voxel, I need to dynamically calculate the index of the position offsets at each level. I realized that if I aligned all of the position offsets and phylloctant material data, instead of keeping them separate, I could jump directly to the octant that I cared about, eliminating buffer reads and computational cycles. The drawback of this was that my sparse voxel octrees would be slightly bigger. I found in practice about 30 to 50% bigger, because I would need to introduce padding to align the data, but the size penalty was well worth it. After making this change and also optimizing some other methods with bitwise operations, I was able to cut rendering speed in half. The voxel mesh you see here draws in about 3.5 to 4 milliseconds, less than half of the 7 to 10 millisecond times I had before on my GTX 1070. In the end, I predictably found that eliminating buffer reads and for loops had major performance benefits. Finally, I went back to my lighting code and worked to add per voxel lighting, rather than per pixel. To do this, I cast a single ray from the voxel and then averaged the lighting value for each exposed face. I like this look decidedly better, because it places emphasis on the overall shape of the mesh rather than the voxel nature of the renderer. I imported a pine tree using voxelizer, and this was the end result. I'm quite pleased with how everything looks. I also added the ability to walk around on top of the mesh. The height at which the camera stands now is roughly what I estimate player heights will be. In adding this feature, I also accidentally added Minecraft-like sneaking with the shift key, which I thought is quite funny. Thank you for joining me on this coding adventure. In the next episode, we'll continue to improve the rendering of multiple objects at once, probably by implementing some sort of acceleration structure. In addition, I want to start improving the generation of voxel octrees and implement the ability to dynamically edit the voxel mesh on the CPU side. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and if you have any thoughts, I would love to hear them down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.